I have an upcoming project in mind where I need to be able to insert tab A into slot B. Unfortunately, slot B is going to be in a piece of round bar, and that's a little bit tough to get a nice clean slot at the face of the anvil the way you would normally punch a hole in flat bar, or square bar, or something like that. So to support the round bar and give me a place to drive a punch all the way through and clear out the slug, I made up this bottom swedge that has a regular swedge and a slotted hole in the bottom of one, and that'll allow the slug to fall out. So this is today's project, is to look at making this swedge. I'm going to start with a piece of 4140 that's one and a quarter inches thick, two and a half inches wide, four inches long. So that's about 30 millimeters by 60 millimeters by 100 millimeters long. Now for forging a swedge like this, I think the ideal tool is the power hammer, so that's where I'm going to do most of the work on this. If you don't have a power hammer, you're just going to have to adapt to use the tools, the techniques, the skills that you have available for you in your shop. You can certainly do this by hand, it's just going to take a lot more energy and going to take a lot longer to get it done. So instead of spending a couple hours creating the swedge portion of this, I'm going to get this done in about a half an hour under the power hammer.
Along with my touch mark, I'm going to go ahead and stamp this 4140. So if I ever have to reharden and temper this in the future, I'll know what material I made it out of. Then I'm going to bring it back up to temperature one more time, bury it in the bucket of vermiculite overnight so it can slow cool and anneal. Then any filing or grinding that needs to be done will be much simpler. Okay, this should have had plenty of time to cool overnight. Some really large things will still be a little warm to the touch after being left overnight, but this isn't that big. Not bad. I think that's what I was after. Just enough room for the slot punch to go through there, so I think this is going to work. My only concern at this point, though, is that that punch is still kind of V-shaped from the top, and that's not what I want. I'd rather have it bell-shaped so that it opens up at the bottom and the slug can fall free instead of getting wedged in there. So that's this morning's job. I want to take a die grinder in there with a burr and open this slot up and get it more into that bell shape so the slug can fall free. I think that'll do the job. Next thing we need to do is put a hardy shank on this. But because this is about the same width as my hardy hole, I don't want to put a square tube. It's got to be hollow so that the slug can fall all the way through. So I'm going to make one that's a U shape and just has a strap on either side. That way the slug should clear the hardy shank and just fall out the bottom of the strap at some point. And for that I've got a piece of stock. It's about 3 8 thick and it fits down inside my hardy hole. Okay, it may take just a little bit of grinding to get a perfect fit, but I'd rather do that than make it way too small. Black Bear Forge is sponsored by Combat Abrasives. Use the link in the video description and the coupon code BLACKBEAR10 for a discount on your next order. I'm going to start by just tack welding these two pieces together. Then I want to put this in the forge and preheat it. You get much better penetration if it's hot. Not forging heat, but way too hot to hold on to. Once I have a nice preheat, I'll finish welding this up. Then I'll let it slow cool, do any cleanup I need to do, and it'll be on to hardening and tempering.
This is ready to harden and temper. I'm going to use the electronic heat treating oven. 4140 is oil hardening and needs a heat of 1570. But I'll put a soak time at about 1200 degrees in there for 20 minutes and then come up from there to 1570. Let it soak there for about 20 minutes. So it's going to take an hour, hour and a half just to come up to heat. But for these big cross section pieces, slow even heating is way better. I've taken the time to preheat my oil and this is ready to quench. I went ahead and put that in the toaster oven to temper at 450. That's a pretty soft temper, but this doesn't have any kind of a cutting edge, so I just want a tough, durable tool out of it. And the last thing I want to do is crack in use. Now, this is my third morning on this project. It really doesn't take that long to do something like this, but when you have to let it anneal and slow cool overnight, you go on and do something else for the rest of that day. And when you put it in the toaster oven to temper, I just let it cool with the toaster oven after it's all done. So I go on and do something else, come back on day three. That means it's about finished and ready to give a test run. The only other work I need to do on this, I want to ease these edges. I'm just going to take these to the grinder and round them over a little bit so that you don't gouge the edge of the work that you're putting in this. That's pretty important on most blacksmithing tools unless you need that crisp edge. Punching a slotted hole in a round bar is a lot like punching any hole at the face of the anvil. You start from one side, you drive the punch most of the way through so you can see that little target mark on the back of it, roll it over, start the punch on the back side, and then you go over the Pritchell hole or the Hardy hole to clear the slug out. This slot that I spent all this time putting in this swedge is really just there to clear the slug. Most of the work is going to be done on the adjacent solid swedge that doesn't have the slot in it. This does roll around some, but once you get the punch started, it's pretty easy to keep that under control. Well, that went pretty smooth. It certainly proves the concept works. I think I need to do a little bit more cleaning up on the edges of the swedge. I did notice a little bit of gouging on there. And the bottom of the solid swedge is a little bit rough from forging. So I think I'll get in there with a die grinder and clean that up. Maybe even a little bit of hand sanding. Just so it doesn't leave too rough a finish on here. Although depending on what you're going for, you might like that texture. This certainly gets the job done. I think it's going to be a useful tool and it's going to do just what I wanted it to do. I also see some other uses for this, but that's going to involve some additional tooling to get the total effect that I want for these other projects. And that'll be another whole series of videos. Join me next Sunday and we'll put this idea to work. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.